Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel, and it is the end of 2019. It's the end of a decade. Can you believe it? It's finally that time of year again where I get to make my end of the year stats video. So this video is going to include a stats portion of the video, which is going to be the beginning portion where I tell you a bunch of stats from my reading throughout the year, like how many books I was able to read per month and what genres I was reading the most and all that nerdy stuff. And then at the end of this video, it's going to be a one by one showing you every single individual book that I read this year. We've got a lot to cover this video, so let's just jump right into it. I want to start with some stats just from my Goodreads page. So in the year of 2019, I was able to read 140 books which is by far the most I've ever been able to read in one year. I think the second closest to this would be like 112 or something. So this is definitely the most I've ever read in any year. And with those 140 books, I was able to read 45,732 pages. The longest book that I read this year was Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky at 720 pages. And then the shortest book that I read this year is We Should All Be Feminist by Adichie. And this one was only 52 pages. The most popular book that I read in the year of 2019 was actually Gone Girl, even though that was a reread, but this book has been read by 2.29 million other people people. And then the least popular book that I read this year was actually Dr. Perfect by Peter Stiles, which was only read by 263 other people. And then my average rating that I gave overall in 2019 was 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is so crazy because that's been consistent the last three years in a row. I've given 3.5 out of 5 as my average rating. So I guess that means I've consistently enjoyed and disliked books for the last three years. So yeah. <laughs> And then the highest rated book that I read this year on Goodreads is Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which has a 4.80 average. Can you believe how high that is? I mean, I can believe it because that book is freaking incredible and everybody's giving it five stars and it is so deserving because it's just the best. All right, so now I just wanted to jump into some stats because I always make these like stats pages at the end of the year so that I can keep track of all the different kinds of nerdy stat things that I like to see for the end of the year. So I'm gonna be showing you some charts while I go over these just because I think these numbers are so interesting to look at. So the first chart that I wanted to look at is going to be the month to month chart. So this is gonna be showing you how many books I was able to read per month. So, so this chart is just gonna be showing you how many books I was able to read per month. And just by looking at this chart, you can see that this year I was reading a lot more per month than I ever have in the past. And that was really what was able to allow me to read as much as I did this year. But like the lowest read months of the whole year for me were April and December. Those two make sense to me because in December, as I said in my wrap up yesterday, I was literally putting up a video every day of December since December 13th. So I just haven't really been reading as much this month. And then in April, I was actually getting ready to move in May. So there was a lot going on in April. On average though, this month, I was reading about 11 to 12 books per month averagely, which is a lot higher for me than last year. I'm pretty sure last year it was like nine to 10 books a month was my average. And my highest month was July with 15 books, which is the highest I think ever per month for me. Like I've never read more than 13 books in a month, I think. So July was just exceptionally high. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I wanted to look at is the kinds of books that I was reading. I like to divide this into either physical books, ebooks, or audiobooks because those are the three ways that I consume books. So for physical books, I have 96 physical books read this year. For ebooks, I have 20, and for audiobooks, I have 24. This makes me happy that I am mostly reading physical books, which means I'm reading the books that I own mostly, which is good because <laughs> I want to be reading the books that are actually like on my shelves, you know, physically, so that's good. I really haven't been reading as many ebooks this year as I have in years in the past. Like, I don't know, there's just something so much better to me about like holding the physical book in your hand. Like, I just really want to feel like I'm reading a book and not just like being on my phone. I used to read a lot more ebooks, but now I'm just reading more physical books. And then audiobooks is 24 audiobooks, which this would have been higher, but since I just moved in May this year, and then after May, I was reading a lot more audiobooks because I moved to where I was 30 minutes away from my job. So now, ever since May, I've been like listening to a lot more audiobooks on my commute to work and stuff. So that number is probably going to be even higher next year. And then the next chart I wanted to look at is my ratings for the year. So this year, I had 35 five stars, and then I had 42 four stars 
33 stars, 32 stars, and only three one stars. This list also makes me happy and surprises me because I'm definitely giving out four stars the most, which is not that surprising since my average rating for the whole year was 3.5. Like I knew it was gonna be around that, but I had 35 five-star books this year. I will say though, throughout this whole year, I did have 11 rereads for this year. And out of those 11 rereads, I wanna say at least nine of them were five stars. So like that definitely contributes to that number of like 35 five-star books. But that number is still higher, I think, than it's ever been before. And that's probably due to the fact that I was reading more than I ever have before. <laughs> yeah, nothing about those numbers really surprises me. I'm glad that I only had three one-star books. Like, I'm really not giving out one-star reviews as often as I used to because a book really just has to piss me off to, for me to only give it one star. But I did have quite a few two stars and three stars this year, which is normal. All right, so next up, I wanna look at male versus female authors. And this year <laughs> is really no different than any year before, but the amount of female authors that I read in comparison to male authors is just insane. I read 104 female authors and 36 male authors. There just aren't a whole lot of male authors that I'm really interested in reading. Like when I think about all of my favorite authors of all time, I can only think of women authors. That's always just gonna be the case for me because I read a lot of romance and almost every romance book that I read is written by a woman. So I feel like the female authors is always gonna be higher for me than the male authors just because of the fact that I read romances a lot. I don't know, like that's pretty crazy like because that female stack of authors is three times as much as the male authors that I was reading this year. So pretty crazy to think about, but I feel like it's always gonna end up being like that for me. <laughs> the next chart that I want to look at is the age group of the book and so this time I usually I used to do young adult new adult and adult for this list but now I'm only doing young adult versus adult because I feel like new adult is getting harder and harder to define like what new adult is so I'm just lumping in the new adult with the adult also with the adult I'm also lumping in like some nonfiction that's not really specific for young adult books this year, I only read 22 young adult books and then I read 117 adult books. I, I just haven't been reading as much young adult lately. I'm just, I'm just not really drawn to it, I guess, the way that I used to be. Like, there are definitely some really great young adult books, but for me, for the most part, like, I don't know, I'm just not super interested in young adult as much anymore. Like it's still something I read from time to time, obviously, because I still have 22 young adult books that I read this year, but it's just not something I'm like super, super gravitating towards anymore. So it doesn't surprise me that that number is that low. <laughs> All right, and then the next chart I wanted to look at is what year the books were published in that I was reading because I always know that I'm gonna be reading mostly new releases because since I am like receiving books from publishers and I'm getting arcs sometimes, like I'm mostly gonna be reading books that are published published in that year. But I do think it is interesting to take a look at what year all the books were published that I read in the year. So for this year, I read 90 books that were published in 2019. I read 25 books that were published in 2018. I read 23 books that were published before 2018. And then I've also read two books that were ARCs that are coming out in 2020. I do feel like the like number of books that I read before published 2018, like 23 books, like that's not bad. I do still have a problem of like, I'm not reading books that are like that old, you know? Like when I say before 2018, like most of those were, were probably published in like 2015, 2016, you know, like around that. Like I'm not really reading books that are like classics, like going back into the older stuff. And I actually wrote down the two books that were published the longest time ago that I read this year was Pet Cemetery, actually, which published in 1983, and then Misery, which was published in 1987. So about, I guess the 80s is as far back as I go. Because <laughs> I was trying to read those like classic Stephen Kings this year, but other than that, almost everything that I'm reading is new releases, which again, isn't surprising, but I don't think that that's something that's ever really gonna change if I'm being honest either. So the next chart that I wanted to look at is authors that I have read before versus reading authors that are new to me. So on this chart, I have read 82 authors that are new to me, and then I have read 58 authors this year that I have read before. And this is always interesting to look at because that shows me that I am picking up a lot of books from authors that I've already previously read and previously enjoyed. So that's good because like, I always try to make an effort to do that. Like if I notice that I really like an author's book, then like I should check out their other books because I'm more likely to enjoy those too. And I wanna make a habit of doing that more. So it's interesting to see these numbers, but of course like the new authors is probably always gonna be higher because 
I'm always trying to like find the next best author, you know, like you're always trying to discover new things. So of course that number is probably always going to be higher. And then the last little chart that I wanted to look at with you is the genres that I was reading in 2019. And on this chart, I have nine different genres that I was reading this year. So I have 23 contemporary novels, 36 romance novels, 34 thriller mystery books, six sci-fis, 10 horrors, three literary fictions, 16 non-fictions, eight historical fictions, and four fantasy books. Romance is actually my highest for this year, which I, th I was kind of surprised by honestly because for some reason in my head I was thinking I didn't read that much romance this year but in reality I just didn't read that much romance this year that I enjoyed I guess. <laughs> Unsurprisingly thrillers is my second most read genre with 34 but you know about this chart that I'm really surprised by is nonfiction. I read 16 nonfiction books this year which is really surprising. I think that number is like double the amount of the past years of how much nonfiction I've been able to read. I really have been gravitating towards a lot more nonfiction this year with books like Know My Name and On Writing and Michelle Obama's memoir. Like there's a lot of really great nonfiction coming out lately and more that I've been discovering. So I've been really getting into more nonfiction. I also am surprised by the 10 horror books, but I was trying to get into more like classic Stephen King this year. So that can probably explain that. And I did read a lot of horror in October this year, which was great. I also just wanted to include on here that I read 19 of my book of the month selections this month because I am an ambassador for book of the month. And so they send me like throughout the beginning of this year, they had been sending me three books every month until November. Then they changed it to only one book per month. So I've received quite a bit of books from them this year. So I do try to make a habit of trying to read at least one of those per month. And I did actually have a goal for myself this year to read one of the book of the month selections I got every single month. And, but I did read 19 of my book of the month selections this month. So that's pretty good because that's at least one per month, right? That's like almost one and a half. Anyways, I also did want to mention that I read 21 arcs this year of like books that were sent to me before they released. And as I said earlier, I had 11 rereads for the year. And most of those took place at the very end of December, but I also did have like a reread jar this year that I was doing for every single month. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention some readathons that I participated in this year because this year was actually the year that I participated in the most readathons. Like last year, I only participated in two. And then this year, I actually did quite a few different readathons. I did Contemporary-a-thon in February, and then I did my own Reading After 10 little readathons that I do for myself. I did that three times this year. For the very first time, Jacqueline and myself hosted Romance-a-thon over the summer, which was really, really fun. And we would really like to make that an annual readathon because we had so much fun doing it. I also participated in the Reading Rush over the summer and Spookathon in October and Nightmareathon in October. And then I actually also co-hosted Buzzword Readathon with Books and Lala, my favorite booktuber in November. It was just, it was a great time to be alive. So yeah, those are all of my official stats from the year. So now we get to jump into the portion of the video that is just the most fun. And it is me telling you every single book that I read this year. And I know that that might seem kind of like tedious and over the top for some people. So I know that some people aren't really interested in watching that. So if this is goodbye, then thank you so much for watching in 2019. And I am very much looking forward to hanging out with you guys in 2020. And can I just say like, it's just crazy. Like this year, my channel really took off and I just really appreciate all the support and all the likes and the comments and everything like this year I've gained 18,000 subscribers just this year like it's totally crazy because I started the year with 10,000 subscribers and I'm ending the year with 28,000 subscribers so thank you so 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 much for an incredible 2019 and I just really really do appreciate all of you yeah let's talk about all the books that I read this year <laughs> The Perfect Nanny by Layla Slamani, Renegades by Marissa Meyer the Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney, My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Dr. Perfect by Peter Stiles, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, Becoming by Michelle Obama, Elevation by Stephen King, Golden State by Ben H. Winters, Atheists Who Kneel and Pray by Taryn Fisher, this one was a reread, A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, The Winter Sister by Megan Collins, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, 99% Mine by Sally Thorne, On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, I Owe You One by Sophie Kinsella, If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, A Heart in a Body in the World by Deb Coletti, 
Lie With Me by Felipe Besson, Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig, I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney, For Everyone by Jason Reynolds, Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson, The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin, Baby Teeth by Zoj Stage, Aced by Ella Frank and Brooke Blaine, this one was also a reread, Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose, Five Feet Apart by Rochelle Lippincott, The Queen of Hearts by Kimmery Martin, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, this time this one was a reread as well, <laughs> My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing, A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman, Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone, Birthday by Meredith Russo, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis, Unteachable by Leo Rader, this one was a reread, Normal People by Sally Rooney, When Ashes Fall by Marnie Mann, Inspection by Josh Mallerman, Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, Intercepted by Alexa Martin, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, If We Could Go Back by Cara D, Again But Better by Christine Riccio, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, this one was a reread, The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor, The Night Before by Wendy Walker, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, Necessary People by Anna Petoniak, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell, all We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston, The Wedding Party by Jasmine Gulleroy, Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen, Recursion by Blake Crouch, The Test by Sylvain Nuevel, Miss Everything by Jennifer Weiner, The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez, On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves, A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott, Top Secret by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy, Waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey, I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, Naturally Tan by Tan France, 13 by Steve Kavna, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safai, The Nowhere by Chris Jill, Miracle Creek by Angie Kim, Every Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes, Scythe by Neil Schusterman, Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren, A Stranger on the Beach by Michelle Campbell, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, this one was a reread, We Should All Be Feminist by Adichie, Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center, Supermarket by Bobby Hall, The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman, Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, Life of the Party by Olivia Gatwood, Autobiography by Christina Lauren, this one was a reread, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood, Someone We Know by Sherry Lupina, The Passengers by John Mars, When August Ends by Penelope Ward, Wilder Girls by Rory Power, The Whisper Man by Alex North, the Arrangement by Robin Harding, Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher, Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vanderha, Water Runs Red by Jenna Clare, Three Women by Lisa Tadio, If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman, Regretting You by Colleen Hoover, Lost You by Halen Beck, Hate Notes by Vi Keeland and Penelope Ward, Modern Love by Daniel Jones, Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman, her Pretty Face by Robin Harding, Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, Imaginary Friend by Stephen Shabotsky, Careful What You Wish For by Haley Efron, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, Adam Teen by Hannah Berry, The Chain by Adrian McKinty, The Dead Girls Club by Damian Angelica Walters, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, Undercurrents by Nora Roberts, Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Karen Kilgariff, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, The Mermaid's Voice Returns in This One by Amanda Lovelace, Love Looks Pretty on You by Lang Leave, How to Date Men When You Hate Men by Blythe Robertson, Misery by Stephen King, Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, The One by John Mars, 30 Dates in 30 Days by L. Spencer, In Five Years by Rebecca Surley, On Writing by Stephen King, The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams, City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, this one was a reread, The Wives by Taryn Fisher, The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling, The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth, Someday Someday by Emma Scott, Christmas in the City by LJ Shen and a collaboration of authors, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, this one was a reread, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, this one was also a reread. And lastly, We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson, which was also a reread. This is a look at all of the physical books that I own that I read in 2019. And this is not including all of the books that I have already unhauled from earlier this year that I read. And it's also not including any ebooks or audiobooks that I read this year, unless I already owned the physical copies of those. But yeah, damn, it's a lot of books. 
at least 100 books right here. I mean, this year I read 140 books, so I'm assuming this is probably around 100 books right here. And those were all of the books that I read in 2019. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching in 2019, and I look forward to seeing you all in 2020. Thanks again.